Okay, it seems that uh, most of you have started thinking about topics. That's, uh, that's great. Uh, I would like, now it's perfectly fine to talk one-to-one uh, -one about this. So I will give you the opportunity later on. Uh, but I had to stop it now just to, to finish the plenary bit. Um, what I would like us to do now is to, to take a few of your suggestions and just put them on the blackboard and, and elaborate a little bit and, and say something about the potential that they have. So let's remove the screen. This is very noisy. Could I, could I start? I just had a, the last discussion we had. We, we were talking about the potential um, related to uh, the supp oil supply services and a comparison between Norway and Brazil. Let's take that as a, an example. Um, okay. Oil supply um, vessels uh, and their Logistics. And then we had a dimension related to um, Norway versus Brazil. Um, the foreign students, I don't know how much you know about the, the Norwegian oil business, but uh, we have a lot of platforms out in the, the North Sea, and they are served uh, with a lot of materials that they need for their operation from oil bases that are located along the coast. And from these oil bases and to the oil platforms, there are offshore supply vessels going back and forth. And there are um, the reason why this might be interesting to the Brazilian students is that uh, you sort of have the same sort of development with slightly different challenges, I guess, uh, and a slightly different phase of development. But there might be um, information sources about the Norwegian case that you could apply to the Brazilian case somehow. Um, so I think this has a lot of potential. Uh, it is international. It, it is about transport and logistics, about serving the oil bases. In Norway, we have also a particular um, challenge. If you well, look at Norway, it looks more like a, a boot like this. The, our oil uh, activities in the North Sea started fairly far south in the North Sea, in between Norway and the UK. Uh, that was back in the 70s. Uh, and it has gradually moved no up north, so now they are doing oil exploration for f in the far north. We are situated somewhere here in Molda. Uh, along this coast, uh, since the activity started, the main, the oil capital of Norway is Stavanger, down here. And this means that a lot of the oil supply uh, services are located there. And it means, for instance, that the platforms that are served from the oil base in Kristiansund, our neighbor town to the north, they have to send some of um, the materials needed for the operation down to Stavanger to be serviced and fixed and things like that. And then they send it up again to Kristiansund and out with the, the supply vessel. The strange thing is that on this road, which includes a lot of ferries and pretty bad roads, all of this is now sent by trucks and not by boat. So that's, that's one type of challenge. Could we think about transferring some of the cargo to a shipping service? Would this be beneficial to the environment? Or, um, uh, so that, that is one part of the issue. Another part would be just the offshore supply uh, services. Uh, how does it work? How could it be optimized? Uh, a lot of potential uh, interesting uh, questions here. And if you look at the comparative case, Norway versus Brazil, 
there might be similarities and, and differences, and maybe you could map that. How is it similar? Uh, how should, uh, to what extent should one choose the same sort of solutions? Or would you need different solutions? I know that the Brazilian oil fields are further away and in much deeper waters. Could that have an impact and, and things like that? That's, that's a good proposition, I think. Um, another one that was mentioned uh, by one of the Norwegian students was uh, the relationship, the, the, the fact that um, we have a lot of um, low-cost uh, truck operators taking over the market in Norway. Whereas we used to have some, some 20 years ago, it was mainly Norwegian operators and Norwegian drivers. Now you will find a lot of foreign operators and some Norwegian operators, but with drivers on a very low pay from typically Eastern European countries. Now, what kind of, um, I mean, this is just identifying a phenomenon, something that's happening. It isn't analytical yet. How could we make this analytical? What, what do we need to make things analytical? We need questions, right? Research questions, research angles. Can you think of a research angle or a question that could be asked related to this phenomenon? Something that might be interesting to look into? We discussed briefly one. Can you remember? I mentioned The word cabotage, I don't think we, had, I'm, I'm teaching two different logistics modules this autumn, so I'm a bit uh, worried that I haven't mentioned this in this class, and I don't think I have. Um, cabotage is typically, uh, in the Norwegian case, it would mean that, uh, let's say, a Polish truck operator uh, not only takes cargo from, from Germany to, to Norway uh, and from Norway to Germany again, but would also take cargo between two Norwegian towns, from Molde to Oslo, for instance. That is cabotage, and this is regulated. They have a limited um, uh, possibility to do that. So the competition is somehow limited through regulations. The Norwegian operators, they are claiming that these rules are not followed. It's not policed, it's not controlled enough. And they say that this is an example of social dumping. Have you heard that term, social dumping? It is typically used by uh, the um, uh, labor unions, claiming that it's not possible anymore to survive on the salary uh, of a truck driver in Norway because these are um, these low-cost operators are taking over the market. So there could be a number of questions uh, asked here. Um, one is obviously to what extent are these rules followed? That would be a very interesting question to ask. The problem is that it might not be one that you're able to answer. Maybe there is not enough information. So that's another thing. Once you have posed some questions, you will need to do a check on other sources of information that I can use. Um, but what we discussed briefly here was that it might be a good idea to make contact with the labor unions and ask them, do you have any written material, some research reports, something like that, written on this subject? And then you could develop this uh, further. Okay, 
Let's do another one that I've heard mentioned from you. This was, let's take the German case of the river Elbe. And impacts for the port of Hamburg. Now, uh, how is the River Elbe linked to the port of Hamburg? Could you explain to the class? Why, why does these things go together? Why is it linked? Okay, yes. So this is, uh, Hamburg is situated somewhat inland and, and needs to go, and the, the traffic needs to go on the river. And then, is this um, an existing plan or are they doing this or? Yeah, it's an existing plan, but at the moment it's um, yeah, stopped. Okay. Because um, there are some lawsuits and mm -hmm. um, because the environmental problems, yeah. Yeah, great. Um, so, we discussed briefly before the lecture what could be interesting parts of this. What kind of research question? Can you think of a research question related to this, an analytical angle? It, it, it's, it's pretty close just by the formulation I've given, by the keyword impact analyzing impacts, what kind of consequences would this have for the ports of Hamburg and the type of consequences that would be um, interesting to look at could be the competitiveness of the port. Ports are competing for business as other actors. Which are the major competitors to the port of Hamburg? Mm -hmm. Okay, now we're getting closer to an analytical angle. You see, we start by sort of a phenomenon, or the phenomenon is actually, before this one, the problem of shallow waters in the river which limits the operation of, of big vessels. And then this is a potential solution and you can describe that solution uh, or if you don't want to ask questions about the competitiveness, uh, the other thing that you mentioned could be uh, environmental impact. So you could choose to dig into that. Uh, as well and, and look at there are probably reports out there uh, about this and and evaluate that should it or should it not be done and in what way should it be done are there ways of avoiding negative environmental impact a lot of questions could be asked there as well so you see this could be very big so if you choose that you shouldn't choose this one and vice versa this is what I think about but narrowing it down. In a small paper like this, you couldn't address both the competitiveness and the environmental impacts. It would probably be too much. At least it would be more interesting if you choose one of them and dig deeper. <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> good. Digging deeper would be uh, very good for this subject area. Okay, should we do a final one before we break? Um, who were uh, the two of approaching me in the end? Uh, y you were the ones. Yeah, uh, Could you please tell me if you have an idea? Yeah, um, we have an idea. Um, it's about a 
transporting of goods and uh, if there are problems or which kind of advantages there are that Norway is not in the uh, EU um, compared to um, Central Europe. Okay. Um, with respect to transport. Okay. Um, potentially interesting, rather difficult. And the main reason why it's a bit difficult is because we are a member of the European Economic Area, the EEA, which means that, with a few exemptions, we, we adopt all the EU regulations. So we are, most Norwegians don't like to think they are EU members, but in practice we are 80-90% EU members because we, all the Brussels regulations, they, they feed into the Norwegian system through the EEA or a Norwegian EUS uh, agreement. Um, so maybe it's a bit difficult because I don't think we are that different. There could be, I, I could be mistaken, there could be areas where, um, where there are differences. But I think in the transport sector we are more or less on par with the other European situations. Okay. Um, but um, you could find elements of this, uh, I guess, in uh, in trying to find out uh, whether or not uh, um, the regulations are effective. We mentioned the cabotage things, there could be other, there uh, could be regulations uh, with respect to uh, how much time you're allowed to drive and rest and things like that and whether, whether we, uh, one thing that's very hot is, is whether or not um, the technical standard or the foreign trucks that come into the country are worse than Norwegian ones. This is the media image in Norway, because we always see, especially in winter time with the slippery roads and things like that, we typically see a Polish trailer blocking the road uh, in this area on the way to Oslo, for instance, and the traffic is, has to stop for, for six hours or something like that. This is the media picture in Norway. And I don't know whether it's true or not. Maybe it's possible to dig up some information how many of the accidents are related to foreign trucks? Are they, is there any evidence that they are of worse quality than the Norwegian? This is what the Norwegian operators claim, of course, that um, they should be stopped at the border because they, are not, they don't have proper winter tires or, or snow chains. And so there might be something uh, sort of within this, but you would need to find a more specific topic there. Okay, I think yeah, this is very good. Uh, you seem to be, get going fairly well. Um, you will, towards the end of today's seminar, also sit together in groups and, and try to develop it a little bit further. We have a few more slides and lectures, but uh, let's break for 15 minutes first. So could we resume at 25 past? Thank you.